Hey guys, it's Troy here. Let's try another pen mail video today, and I've got two vintage pens I wanted to share with you. Uh, the first is I got a new Waterman, a Waterman 54 that I had purchased, and uh, you know I, I bought this uh, from a seller. I'd seen pictures of the pen, and uh, I've got you know a Waterman 52, a 55, a 12, and I saw this as a 54. Now, a Waterman 54, for those of you who are familiar with 52s, is essentially uh, a Waterman 52 with a number four nib on it. And I didn't have a number four nib on it. So I went ahead and bought this. Number one, it's absolutely a beautiful pen. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's all black with some gold trim and a nice uh, gold overlay right here. You know, the cap was uh, very nicely preserved. It wasn't uh, worn or anything like this. This probably came out of an estate and uh, sat around for a long time. I knew it was going to probably need a new ink sack, which I did put on it. And I'm looking here. You know, it's got some nice imprints that actually showed up a whole lot better after I had cleaned up the pen. Uh, because the imprints weren't showing up very well. Now, when I first got it, this pen was actually just about as shiny as it is now. And uh, then I started to clean it up a little bit, polish it up a little bit, and it got kind of dull. <laughs> and as I'm using some, uh, you know, some polishing compound on it, it started to get, you know, a lot duller. I was like, oh, that's not good. So when you remove oxidation and it gets worse, that that's not a good sign. I didn't think. Uh, but then as I put more stuff on it and I put a, a nice coat of uh, wax on it afterwards, it actually turned out fairly nice, I thought. It restored it, I think, to even better than it was when I first got it. You can see right here on the on the bottom of the barrel that it says 54. So what it was interesting about this, obviously it's a lever filler, so I put on a new sack. Um, and for those of you who are just curious about it, a Waterman does take uh, generally a number 17 sack. And I only had 16s on hand, but a 16 will fit very nicely. It's, it's only a 64th of an inch off. Uh, so that will suffice, and I've done that many times uh, with some of my Waterman pens. So, um, as you see here, um, you know, beautiful, beautiful clip with a ball on it, and uh, very nice, shiny uh, lever. Now, the pictures I've seen of 54s actually has more of a spoon uh, rather than more of a, the spade-style uh, lever there. Now, this thing only takes a real quick turn for it to open. Boop! And open. See the screw uh, right there? But what I found on this one, you go... One quick click, back, and that's it. That's all it takes to, to seal it up. And you've got uh, the, as I, I get kind of uh, <laughs> uh, particular about it, you've got uh, the, the perfect line up there. So it opens, and you've got a fairly nice condition section as well. Uh, and then you've got, obviously, the gold overlay got the imprint I got uh, I can take some more pictures of that now look at this nib you may not be able to tell it from here but you, guess what this is not a number four nib <laughs> so I've got a 54 pen with a number two nib in it when it got to me it's like really so one of two things either it came from the factory that way which I tend to doubt or somebody had swapped this nib out at a later date. I tend to think that somebody put a number two nib into a 54 pen. So uh, it does have some nice flex, but I gotta be honest, this particular number two nib is not the best number two nib that I've had so far. I've had some wonderful number two nibs. Uh, not this one quite as much. So uh, let's go ahead and see how she writes. See, it's nice flex. You got some really nice flex in here. So it's a Waterman 54 with a number two nib. You know, it writes a little scratchier than I like, and I even, uh, you know, I, I worked on alignment a little bit, and I uh, even um, smoothed it out just a hair. I mean, just a little bit to try to get it to write a little smoother, and it does. But still, and it writes better on this Rhodia paper than it does on regular paper. This is a very fine line. Now, you can go from a very fine line to a very wide line. 
and get a lot of good variation and flex out of this number two nib. Interestingly enough, I tried to get a number four nib. There was a seller in uh, England who had put up a number four nib for sale, even though I know it's probably not the right one for this pen, it's still a number four nib. And it was the best price I'd seen online. And he wanted like 17 pounds for it. Um, and then he had <laughs> make an offer. Um, as well. So I went ahead and said, okay, I made an offer for 15. He counter offered with 1650. <laughs> it's like decline. Really? A half a pound. That's all you were willing to back off of the price when you say, you know, make an offer? A half a pound? <laughs> it'll, st it'll sit there for sale and I may yet make another offer, uh, but doggone. So, you know, he just lost my business uh, for the immediate future. Uh, the, the ink, by the way, here was a, uh, a Waterman black, uh, or intense black. So, anyway, I'm happy with how the pen turned out it, uh, as far as its aesthetics. It looks very nice. It writes uh, or holds in the hand to write fairly well. It uh, It's nice and clean. It didn't take much to get it up to snuff. A little disappointed in the nib, but it is what it is. Yeah, of course, that wasn't in the description. So a 54 with a number two nib, I guess that makes it really a 52. Uh, but uh, so that's my first pen. The next pen I want to show you is another vintage pen. And this is a pen that I have had in my collection for a while, but I haven't been able to use it until today. I just unboxed it just within the past 10 minutes. So you're going to get to see it just after I got to see it. And you'll see it right as I get to see it right. It showed up, uh, you know, packaged up in a box and some padding material and in one of these tubes that looks like actually I'm at a, uh, a bank drive through and I was going to, you know, put uh, my deposit slip in, in the check in here and sh shove it in the, in the vacuum tube and pfft, get sucked up to the teller. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it came in one of these tubes now I've got uh, that tube to put back into my collection because um, I've got more tubes and I know what to do with them now uh, but uh, when you think about the Parker model vintage Parkers what do you think of well for me it was a Parker 51 I had a Parker 21 that works well I got a Parker 45 my son has a Parker 45 that was given to him uh, by Steph over at Grand Mia Pens um, I've got a Parker 45 flighter that I really like um, Matthew, my son, was given a Parker 51 uh, that works well. It's an aerometric style filler. Well, I had purchased a Parker 51, um, oh gee whiz, better part of a year ago, and I hadn't been able to use it. So I decided that um, you know, it's about time for me to do something about it. So Antique Digger, AntiqueDigger.com. If you look here at the bottom of your screen, there's the website. I met Greg at the Raleigh Pen Show back in, what, June, I think? Uh, August, whenever, whenever the Raleigh Pen Show is. I think it's in June. And, um, you know, I knew, I, I knew that he had a bunch of pens that he was working on. I can't remember if he had a... a, a a display full of snorkels at the time or what but uh, really uh, really enjoyed talking with him there's some some people that you meet you just like and I liked him and uh, so we've kept in touch a little bit uh, since then and I've purchased from him uh, if you remember the video that I did on the Waterman 12 it's one that he had restored and I purchased from him and I knew that he did restoration services so we talked a little bit about some restoration I've got a, a Parker uh, 51 that needed restoration, which is this one right here, and I've got uh, also a Schaefer Snorkel uh, that's a desk pen that I'm going to have to send off for repair as well. So I've had this 51 for a while and I haven't been able to use it. I haven't been able to use it because it needed restoration. Um, you know, the, uh, the fill tube was disconnected and it probably needed um, uh, to be torn apart and have a new diaphragm put in it. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not at that level yet. So uh, I know guys who are, who do good work, and I'm willing to pay for someone to do some good work for me. So this Parker 51 just showed up in the mail. What I'm going to do for you, by the way, is I'm going to put a link um, to the YouTube video. Hopefully he'll leave it up on his account of uh, him, uh, uh, Greg, showing me this pen on a YouTube video of it having been completed with its restoration. And I'll put up a picture of uh, what it looked like when he had it torn apart. So, um, looking forward to playing with this. So, you got the, the typical Parker clip. It's got the silver cap. It's got the name Parker right down here. 
and you've got the hooded nib that is so common uh, that's so recognizable as Parker or Parker style very long section here as normal and he's got chalked out here some of the uh, the imprint that was on there and then you've just got the uh, you know the long barrel here and then you got the blind cap here the blind cap comes off and you can see that this one is the the pump style filler so it is the vacuumatic if I've got a Parker vacuumatic well it's kinda like the Parker vac vacuumatic and it's got the um, right there you've got that uh, there you go boop and it's still got some water in it from when he tested it so I don't know if you saw that well I think I got most of the water out now but there was still actually some water if you see uh, right here actually dripped out on me so um, what I'll do here is um, and look at this I mean there's a beautiful restoration job he's got it polished up very nicely buffed it out very nicely um, and it does indeed look almost new so what I'm going to do here is we'll do a writing sample. I'll give it a fill um, and uh, we'll see how it does. All right, so I've got out the stuff I need to ink. Now I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to uh, go any fancy inks on this. I am going to use a good safe ink that I know works and works well. So I'm going to use my Waterman Intense Black. And I've been using this a lot lately because I just got the bottle. I had run out of Waterman Black ink, so I had just recently got it. And I've been doing a lot of vintage pens lately. So I've been filling with uh, Waterman Mysterious Blue. I've been filling with uh, you know, a Waterman, um, another Waterman Blue. Um, and I've been filling it with Waterman Intense Black. Oh, why am I drawing a blank on the other blue? Um, but anyway, it used to be called Florida Blue. And... Uh, so now they give it a different name. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to fill this sucker up. Stick her in. You may be able to hear that. All right, she should be filled now. So, let's put the blind cap back on the pen. I got a smudge. There we go. All right, and here is the cap. So let's go ahead and post it. Chinese food containers—they come in valuable if you deal with pen supplies. I've got lots of these left over that I've kept, saved, washed out, and uh, I actually use it for ink filling for a reservoir for that and uh, for putting in pens as they dry putting in pens that are uh, that need to be flushed out and when I'm tearing pens apart when I'm filling these are invaluable so Chinese food containers little tip alright so let's go ahead and give her a shot you're gonna see this as I am seeing it and getting to use this pen for the first time since I have purchased it so this is my Parker 51 and this is newly restored that's going nice and smooth right there once you start writing you know when I first initially put pen to paper um, when the ink just first started to flow it wasn't quite as smooth and by the time you start to really get some ink flow down here um, when you get down to here it's going really really smooth so like I said this is the first time it's been written with with ink since it's been restored and probably the first time in decades that it's been running with ink so restored by and you see how it's getting darker and darker the ink flow is going better and better now restored by antique digger dot com antique digger dot com talk to Greg if you need some work and he's got a page on there on pen restoration and he's fairly reasonable uh, on rates and actually um, I was surprised just how quickly he turned this one around for me that was a shocker I mean I'm talking I sent it out a week ago today and I got it back today so within seven days I had this pen fixed turned around I mean I don't always expect that kind of uh, service at all matter of fact I don't know if you I should even tell you that I got it back that quickly but you did a great job in a timely fashion so my Parker 
Look how much darker that is than it, than it was up here. Once that ink flow really starts to kick in and trickle out. So my Parker 51 uh, with, and it's getting a, a not much wider, broader line now that the ink has really started to flow with a Waterman Intense Black. So now, seeing this, now I can really tell you why people like Parker 51s. I've got a 21 that I like. Matthew has a nice uh, 51. And, uh, you know, you're not going to get any great line variation out of this. Don't expect it. I mean, it's a hooded nib. You don't really have much room for this nib to flex at all. But doggone, now look at that, huh? Lays, this one lays down a tremendous amount of ink. Look at that. So, once you got the juices flowing, doggone, this is sweet. And uh, very smooth. So there you go. That's my pen mail. I got a new pen to play with. I got a new pen of the day for me to keep. Um, and uh, I'll put some links up for you to follow to take a look at the progress or the, this pen as it went through the progress. Actually, the uh, the post um, restoration uh, video. And uh, you know, I'll be using this one a lot. I mean, I like the Parker. Uh, Parker's a classic brand. Uh, it was quality. It's been copied an awful lot by Chinese knockoffs for a reason. I've got Chinese knockoffs that are a lot like this that I paid a couple dollars for. And quite honestly, I picked this one up fairly cheap on, on, uh, on eBay. And that's one of the, the pitfalls of going with eBay. When you buy vintage, you don't always know whether or not it's been restored. And when you buy from somebody who has restored it, I've actually seen some of the pricing. And I got out cheaper buying it and then having it restored. That's not always the case. Sometimes you'll buy a pen, and then you got to pay for restoration if you don't know how to do it yourself. And it can cost more. The good news is that you know that you're going to get a fine, finished product by the time it comes back to you. So there's a jewel on that, just thinking about it. And uh, I'm happy with this thus far because I didn't pay a tremendous amount of money for it. Got a good deal on it got a very reasonable um, rate to have it restored and back into my possession so um, yeah I got a I got a good deal on this I think overall I got a, so far I'm happy with it I'll be using this a lot coming up so and this is just I mean just a classic looking pen you know the silver uh, from you know I believe this is from like the 1940s uh, I thought uh, Greg said it was like a 1947 body with a 51 nib that was on it something like that uh, but uh, just a workhorse pen from the 40s and 50s, and I can see why. It's got enough weight to it to, uh, to really make you think that you've got something uh, substantive in your hand, and it's quality enough to be able to use at work, at, at the desk. So, Troy, be a happy customer. AntiqueDigger.com for your pen restoration needs. Uh, I'll be using him again, I am sure. And you can see the, uh, the after effects down here on paper right in front of you in black and white. So that's my pen mail for today. And actually the, uh, the, the Waterman that I shared came in, I believe, on Saturday, just two days ago. So uh, yeah, had a vintage weekend and Monday. Ciao.